CEO and co-founder of Zello. How would you characterize Canada's entrepreneurship ecosystem? Sort of longer term, bigger picture, what are its strengths and weaknesses? And maybe a few clues as to what we can do to improve it. For sure. Um, you know, when I step back and look at what we have today here in Canada, and I guess I'm probably most familiar with the Toronto scene, I think it's actually very robust. Uh, and I think it's something that is continuing to, to get better. What we have today is an ecosystem that is much deeper um, and, and much broader than what we had when I started Zello with my friends. So I think that's a, that's a big change. Um, I mean, one of the most remarkable things that's happened is that we have a technology company that is now the most valuable company in, in Canada. Shopify has you know, leapfrogged RBC, which I don't think many people would have expected in our lifetime. Um, so that's quite amazing. Here in Toronto, we are, we are really blessed with an amazing talent pipeline. So our community college system, our university system turns out a, a ton of grads. Um, and I think there's a real hidden advantage that, uh, at least this is my own theory, um, but globally, we have many people that want to uh, emigrate to North America to improve their quality of life for opportunity. And a great many of them that might have wanted to go to the United States are not able to emigrate there because of the tightness of their, of their requirements. And so a lot of people end up coming to Canada. And that ends up uh, leaving, uh, bringing to Canada a tremendous resource of talent that is really behind the growth of our cities, our major metropolitan areas, Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. So that is really incredible. Entrepreneurial minded people coming to our country to better themselves and, to, and for opportunity. Um, so that's been incredible. And I, the, the other thing is, you know, from my my own um, experiences in watching technology companies in Canada, I was often frustrated by what I saw as selling too soon. Very talented and, and ideas that were amazing, but never reached their full potential. And today, I mean, we even have companies specifically focused on filling that gap. So Canadian Business Growth Fund, they've invested in Zello. Um, that's a perfect example of a problem that I saw that actually has been addressed. So. I think just if you look at the results, a tremendous number of success stories, uh, and it does feel to me like there's momentum there to keep growing. So I'm, I'm very positive. What would you say are the three challenges um, that um, Canadian entrepreneurs face today, the three main ones? Well, I, I think we can't underestimate what the impact of COVID-19 will be for entrepreneurs. Um, in the time of uncertainty and a time where, frankly, resources are going to be limited because we're all we're feeling the economic effects, um, I think that will make it tougher for entrepreneurs. Uh, of course, there will be opportunities. There always will be in situations like this. But overall, if you look at the market, I think it's going to be tougher. People will be more conservative, um, probably less interested in trying something new because maybe they're feeling concerned. Um, so I do think in the short term, that COVID will probably have a, have an impact and people thinking about entrepreneurism will need to take that into account. Um, I, the other thing that really has changed in my mind is that, um, and this isn't just limited to entrepreneurs, this is business in general, the need to deal with constant change. So when I started, you know, when I started into business and wanted to be an entrepreneur, and part of my idea was, you know what, I'm willing to work incredibly hard. And, and what I see as the benefit of starting my own business is that if you work really hard for a number of years, at some point, you're going to get to the point where you can say, I can, I can sit back, I can relax. And about five years ago, I realized that's never going to happen. <laughs> that is never going to happen. There is always going to be another challenge. And I might wake up tomorrow with the new competitor that blows us out of the water. I have to be prepared for that, that eventuality. So eventually, I came to terms with that. And it was actually a good thing because now I embrace change. I look forward to change. It's an opportunity for growth. That's how I see it. So if things weren't changing, I would feel I'm stagnating. But as an entrepreneur, like you have to be prepared to deal with constant change. And you're not as sheltered as a bigger corporation might be from things that are moving around. You don't have, you've got to, you know, you're living on the edge. Uh, the other thing I think is just from my own experience uh, as an entrepreneur, if you're lucky enough to see your business grow, you have to be prepared to, to change yourself, to adapt, to learn new skills. So the things that brought you success early on, 
um, are not going to be the things that will lead to continued growth. So um, maybe maybe one of the things you're you're good at is is being a solo breakthrough, make things happen on your own. Well, if you want your company to grow, you're going to have to learn how to work with a group of people successfully, how to collaborate, how to delegate, how to manage people, and that's very different from doing. So looking at uh, looking at those challenges, and in particular in the Canadian context. What must be done and by who to um, address those challenges? I think the first thing is when I think about our economy, when I think about government, when I think about business, um, academia, and all these different stakeholders and, and players, if you will, in, in the economy, I actually think for, from the perspective of setting the stage for entrepreneurs, they're actually doing a very good job. Um, but that a little bit of that comes in the perspective of when I started a business. When I started you know, window washing business or, or Zello, these are two businesses that I've worked on. Um, I never in my mind had any kind of thought about what is the government going to do for me? You know, what are the condi- what, am, what are what is not in place that I need to be in place to start my business? That just wasn't even in my mind. More in my mind was no matter what, assume no one will help you. Right. No matter what, you need to find something where even if everything goes wrong, you still have a chance. Right. So that that's kind of the perspective that that I came to it from. Now, that being said, Zello has benefited enormously from government programs like Shred, Scientific Research and Development Tax Credits. Uh, There's one here in Ontario called the Ontario uh, Digital Media Tax Credit has been hugely beneficial. Um, We just finished a program with IRAP, which is an industrial research assistance program. And there's no doubt Zello would not be where it is today without those programs. And that's why I look at government. I think they're actually doing a really good job. Um, So so as far as, you know, what else can they do? um, I I actually have a fair amount of trust and faith that they're 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 going to be able to figure it out. uh, And they are very supportive. How would you characterize the response uh, of the federal government in particular to uh, COVID-19 in terms of supporting entrepreneurs? And what do you think is needed going forward, given what you said that, you know, entrepreneurs are definitely going to feel COVID-19? When COVID hit, a lot of that money we were expecting to come in was building up as accounts receivable. No one was paying us. And probably other businesses found that as well. So very quickly, we were in a cash crunch. So what we were able to tap into is the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy Program, temporary program. We qualified on the basis that we were not able to collect on our accounts receivable. So we were able to qualify for that program. There's another one where we were able to defer our employer health tax portion. So we took advantage of both of those programs and that allowed us to get over the hump when customers started to pay us again. So really the program, I think the idea was absorb the shock. Right, so that things don't collapse, and from that perspective, for Zello, it, it worked really, really well. What is the, uh, the 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 entrepreneur's DNA, and and how much of it would you say is actual DNA, sort of, you know, from birth, yeah. and how much of it can be learned? Great, uh, I love this question, and, and really, I don't know if you know if you know much about Zello, but the idea behind Zello is we're trying to help people um, plan for their future, to create a successful future, right? And and one of the questions that you know, I, I, there's this great cartoon of um, uh, of these two individuals showing up at a, um, a patent, a patent, um, submission, uh, office in the U S and it says below separated at birth and it's two twins and they've arrived at the patent office on the exact same day with the exact same invention. DNA right? Or, or is there something else at work? And so even when we're thinking about how do we prepare kids for the future, how much is nature, how much is nurture, right? So I, I think it, what we do know about entrepreneurs is that there are um, certain characteristics, right, which you kind of have to have. So you have to be comfortable with risk. I think that much we know. Um, you have to be comfortable making decisions with limited information, right? You have to have some confidence in your judgment, right? And yeah, I think you have to be optimistic, but pragmatic. So, so these are things that I think are, are shared traits. Um, it's sort of like a way of seeing the world. It's a mindset. You see possibilities 
right? Sometimes to your detriment, right? <laughs> a little over optimistic, but it is a mindset. What would be your advice to um, either yourself or, or someone else starting a business um, today? What are some of the main things that you would say um, one has to keep in mind, double down or even do differently? The choice of the business that you start, whatever that is, whatever industry it is, um, whatever, if it's technology, if it's whatever it could be, that's probably the most important decision you make. So they often talk about in technology, what would you rather have? Um, an amazing team of designers, developers, engineers, QA experts, research experts, focused on an industry where there isn't as much growth or a terrible group that doesn't have a lot of skill, but they're in the right industry. And you wanna go for the second option, right? So what you choose for your business is, is really important. And so where I spent a lot of my time was trying to understand what is it, what makes a successful business? What are the characteristics? And, and trying to if, create in my own mind, um, what am I looking for in starting a new business. I always advise that people read as much as possible. Uh, I started early on, like I can even think in grade nine, I read the report on business, the Globe and Mail every day, just out of interest, right? Just to learn. Um, and then I, you know, from there, I went on reading stories, uh, you know, biographies about Apple, Microsoft, but not just technology companies. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Reichmans, um, reading about the Rockefellers, the Warburgs, the Morgans, right? Um, Barbarians at the Gate was a great book about um, leverage buyouts. So just, I just found that interesting. And, and so from that, it was just getting that idea of, well, what, what are the characteristics of a successful business? For me, the biggest thing I came out of it was, I want it to be a product. So I'm not necessarily selling my time. It needs to be something that can be replicated, that can scale. That was one of the big things that I was looking for. But everyone will have different things that appeal to them in their own model in their head. So think about that and spend a lot of time thinking about the gotchas. Um, the other two are, are a little bit more straightforward. My suggestions would be uh, to take some accounting courses. So you really understand financial statements. Financial statements are the, the books by which you can read a company and understand what's really going on. So without that, I think you can have people who are very strong um, in a lot of different areas, but their businesses fail through maybe cash flow management, right? Or, you know, they, they not sure how the tax filings work and then they get behind and then they get penalties and then that all adds up and then it's just too late. Um, so taking some accounting courses, I think is really important. Um, and then for myself, what was really important was looking for a business to start where we could bootstrap that business, where we didn't need capital up front. So that was something that, you know, it's hard to do that, right? I, I don't know in technology today, if I were to try and start a technology business, I could see that would be a real challenge. If you had 30 seconds to pitch either a person or a group in a position of power in Canada, who would you choose to pitch? And what would you say in under 30 seconds to try to strengthen and improve our entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem in Canada? I do feel like we have a great ecosystem. Um, and we have lots of success stories. And it's really about um, challenging Canadians to maybe overcome some of their risk aversion. I feel like we're, we're less risk takers than Americans on, on average. So helping people, encouraging them to understand that entrepreneurship isn't this big, scary thing, right? Break it down and, and make it more, um, make it something that they're more familiar with and where possible, teach them some of the skills, the light skills like the accounting, right? Where it seems less daunting. And, and in a way, can government help provide that permission that yes, entrepreneurship, it's, it is something you can consider. So, I mean, that can be done and it is done in lots of different ways in the education already. I don't know if you're familiar with DECA, it's an organization that does great work. Um, and then in, in some schools, they'll have entrepreneurship programs, junior achievements, another great one. Um, but we could probably do more. We could make it, you know, it's, it's maybe a two week unit, a six week unit, right? Over a couple different years. So I think that would be, that would be tremendous. 
Um, that could be done through you know, talking to the prime minister or our ministers of education. 